Microsoft recently announced a shocking series of zero day vulnerabilities affecting exchange servers, which are used by, by hundreds of thousands of organizations around the world to host email. On the heels of that, the FBI and CISA also released an advisory because this isn't just a vulnerability. There's evidence that hackers are actively exploiting this and using it to potentially access people's emails, grab copies of their passwords and other sensitive information. Essentially, this is a global mega email breach that is affecting potentially hundreds of thousands of organizations around the world. And this is only the beginning of what we're gonna hear about it. Matt, why do you tell us what the hackers can do and what we should be doing about it. Hackers have been able to exploit a remote code execution vulnerability that was recently discovered by Microsoft to gain access to the Exchange servers and install their own backdoor web shells. These web shells allow the hackers to act or act as the system user within the Exchange server, uh, basically giving them carte blanche to do whatever they want. They can steal email data, they can create new users, they can scrape passwords, steal tokens. Uh, more importantly, they can move to other hosts within the network and laterally move and take over pretty much anything they want to at this point. So who is affected by this? Well, unfortunately, it's pretty much anyone with a public facing exchange server that's newer than Exchange 2010, which is more or less anyone that runs an on-premise exchange server. Now, it's important to note that these are on-premise only as far as we know at this point. Office 365 uh, services are not impacted by this, but if you do maintain your own exchange server, you definitely need to be taking a look at your, uh, your infrastructure and making sure that you're not a part of this massive, massive breach of, uh, of Microsoft services. Let's face it, if your exchange server is older than 2010, you probably have other problems. <laughs> That is true. And there was a defense in depth uh, update released for Microsoft uh, Exchange 2010 from Microsoft, although that operating system is technically considered to be out of date and is not actually supported in the uh, in the current uh, deployment of Exchange. So one scary thing about this is that it is actively being exploited just because the vulnerability has been announced and patches have been released does not mean that it has been fixed. In fact, many organizations around the world are still vulnerable and there's evidence that hackers are actively exploiting this right now. The fact that it's public has not been stopping them. Okay, so uh, it was revealed today that uh, traffic analytics on how frequently the exploits for the Exchange server are being launched show uh, hacking attempts have about doubled every two hours over about the past week, which is a significant increase in activity. Uh, we can also see where these attacks are taking place. There is a large portion that are taking place in Turkey, in the United States, uh, Italy, Germany, Brazil, pretty much all the large major population centers or large industrial centers are, uh, are potentially affected by this. Uh, we can also see kind of the primary targets that are being attacked by this, or at least the ones that are being actively exploited. And unfortunately, a lot of it is government, military, manufacturing, healthcare, education, and banking. So primary services or essential services for, for many countries are really the, the prime target. Although, let's be real about this, everyone is currently at risk. Now, Matt, I think it's interesting that there's a new ransomware variant that's leveraging this vulnerability. It reminds me a lot of what we saw with Eternal Blue, where it just kind of dragged on for years and lots of different kinds of malware ended up taking advantage of this. What do you think? Is this the Eternal Blue for email servers? <laughs> you know, I don't want to go that far and say that it's the Eternal Blue for email servers. But what I will say is that the attacks against Exchange are kind of in a free for all stage right now. So the proof of concepts are out there. Uh, more or less anyone has access to how to exploit this vulnerability. So there are untold number of ways that this could be used to hold a business for hostage, steal data, or just wreak havoc in general. So who's behind this, Matt? So Microsoft has publicly announced that attribution for the at least the original portion of this compromise uh, can be directed towards a, uh, an advanced persistent threat group called Hafnium. Uh, Hafnium is an APT that is known to operate out of China and is suspected to have uh, direct ties to the Chinese government. They traditionally go after military, uh, financial, and healthcare organizations. Uh, but in a rare step, similar to the SolarWinds attacks that we saw uh, prior to this, the attackers are actually launching these attacks from virtual private servers within the United States. And they're doing that to avoid the you know, easy to spot detections coming in from overseas. Now, Microsoft knew you would ask about this, so we figured we'd include it. Uh, the exploits that we're discussing today, as Microsoft says, are in no way connected to the previous SolarWinds breach that was experienced a couple months back. Uh, we'll need to make sure that uh, we, we keep an eye on this and see if it stays that way, but at this point they're saying there is no connection between the two. 
So the activity that we're seeing right now is, is very troubling. What we've noticed is a mass seeding event happening pretty much all across the entire world. Uh, it became pretty obvious early on in this that there was a, uh, er, that the uh, revelation of this to the public was going to cause people to start patching their servers and making it so the remote code execution vulnerabilities and other web shell vulnerabilities would not function correctly. Because uh, the adversary groups knew this, they went on a spree identifying every exchange server they possibly could everywhere they could and launching at least the initial part of the attack against those servers. So what we're, what we're seeing is a lot of servers with a pre-installed web shell that haven't been actively exploited yet, but are very, very primed to be entered into pretty much at any point in time. And as we talked about uh, just a couple of slides ago, the rate at which these attacks are happening is doubling hourly, uh, which is insane when you think about the amount of volume or the amount of traffic and the uh, number of potential victims that could eventually be hit by this. So it turns out Microsoft has actually known about this vulnerability for a little while. Uh, on January 5th of 2021, a security company called DevCore alerted Microsoft that they had discovered this remote code execution vulnerability in the Exchange server. And Microsoft confirmed that uh, vulnerability on January 8th. So we know they've known about it since at least then. Uh, it wasn't until about February 26th that we really saw attacks explode into a full kind of mass infection event, what we're seeing right now. Uh, and as of March uh, 3rd, there were tens of thousands of reported uh, compromised servers that had already been identified. Uh, again, that number is increasing hourly at this point. Microsoft released uh, patch data for this on March 4th. Uh, and on March 5th, the story kind of hit the public airways and well, here we are now. So if you have a public facing exchange server, and uh, it, it's really, we can't stress this enough. If you have a public facing exchange server, you need to take a look at it. There are some telltale vulner or, uh, some telltale indicators of compromise that can, uh, can be kind of sorted out from the normal system files to let you know if you have been affected by this exploit. First off, you need to look in your ASP.NET client files and see if you find anything in the system underscore web folder that is at this point looking like eight random characters and then an ASPX file extension. If you find that, that is the web shell that is responsible for gaining access to your system. Uh, and in most cases, if you do see that, uh, that ASPX file, it's time to treat this as an actual incident and move forward with response procedures. Uh, next, we wanna be on the lookout for PowerShell activity. Uh, encoded commands have been seen running hand in hand with this. Uh, we're looking for new Active Directory account creations, uh, encoded PowerShell commands, uh, new scheduled tasks being added to the system. And Microsoft has actually released a really nice series of scripts that can be run through PowerShell to detect if any of these things are happening. If you haven't run them already, I highly suggest that you do so. Now, Matt, what happens if you don't check for all these indicators of compromise and you just patch and move on? Is there a risk that organizations could patch and then still be hacked? Yeah, that's a great question. And it, it's one that we've actually been getting a lot. The, it's great that there's a patch available for this, but the, uh, the response to this really needs to be taken in both steps. Patching the server is very important, but you need to look for those, uh, those web shell files. If you patch and don't look for those web shell files and the web shell files exist on your, uh, your computer system, that web shell file is not affected by the patch. So that means an attacker can still gain access to your system, even if you've removed the opportunity for them to exploit this remote code execution vulnerability. Uh, it, it's still sitting there waiting as a backdoor for them to come in and, and really kind of wreak havoc on whatever they can get to. So criminals are scanning the internet right now, trying to break into as many of these servers as they can, leave that backdoor, and then even if organizations patch, the criminals can still get in later. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the impacts of this. We are just starting to see the first breaches being announced. So the European Banking Authority announced that they were hit by the Microsoft Exchange attack. And there's evidence that at least 60,000 other organizations have actually been compromised as well. Um, there've been a number of publications talking about the great email robbery, this, um, this one that you see here uh, on cybersecurity law and policy, discusses the fact that it's not just the email that has been stolen to date, we're about to see many more email accounts getting broken into because this patching process is not instantaneous and it's going to take time for organizations to really deal with this vulnerability. So this is a very serious vulnerability. Make sure that you are addressing this, patching it right away. If you're an MSP or an IT provider, make sure that you get right on top of this and that you're patching and looking for those indicators of compromise. 
So the hard truth, unfortunately, is that any publicly facing exchange server is potentially compromised right now. And all of your email data, all of your user data, including passwords, is at risk. So that's something also to think about. Make sure that if you have an email system that's potentially been compromised, that you change those passwords right away as well. The vulnerable code has been in place for over 10 years. That means that this could have been exploited years ago and we're only just finding out about it right now, which is a pretty scary thought. If you do find web shells, treat it as a full network compromise. Make sure you respond. You may want to contact an IT or forensics firm to do a full investigation by experts. Okay, so this actually gets to the topic of end-to-end -end encryption. The cloud will get hacked. In fact, the cloud is constantly being hacked and often it takes a year or two years or three years or more for us to find out that attackers broke into this software. And that's why now is the time for us to really think hard about deploying end-to-end -end email encryption. Recently in LMG, we did a talk on how encryption works um, and specifically highlighted how you can leverage end-to-end -end encryption in the cloud. At LMG, we have actually been encrypting all of our internal emails from the very start of our company. So it is absolutely possible to deploy this. And what that means is that you hold the keys, the encryption keys. They are not in the cloud. So if an attacker breaks into the cloud, if they hack that software, they still can't access your email or whatever sensitive data you've encrypted with that key. So in the case of email, the attackers might be able to see the headers, the to, the from, the subject, but they wouldn't be able to see any attachments. They wouldn't be able to see the content. And that means that the vast majority of sensitive information in your email would be protected even if the server is broken into. Some popular tools that you can use to do this are SMIME. PGP is also an option. Um, if you want more information, check out LMG's YouTube channel for our talk on how encryption works. Our key takeaways for everyone are patch immediately, check for indicators of compromise, and then consider using end-to-end -end encryption for email and for other sensitive information in the cloud. This is not an instantaneous type of thing you can deploy, but over the next year or two years, think about what you can do to make sure that you're protecting your data with strong encryption and not just relying on cloud software. With that, Matt, you want to close us out? Thank you for watching Breaking Breaches. This is Matt and Sherry with LMG Security. Uh, like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter at LMG Security.